Anyways, I think we're ready. Are we ready? Probably not. But it's uh, not too far up and down. And we need you. We're just going to go down here in between these. So this is right about the level we want to be. Bedrock flat. Yes, appears so. All right. So really, I want to be here at this level. Hammer time. Let's go this way. We'll start with this kind of a space because <laughs> I'm not sure how much space we're going to need. Um, we'll do place the ember bore first, and I we need to we'll put it here. core on top. This is how you access it when you just want one accessible spot, but this will give us access in multiple places. All right, and then we need this. And I think we need to have it up high enough so that um, I don't want to have a whole lot of bends or anything. So if we do that might be too close. It needs at least one gearbox, I believe. And this is the output. So now we have that, so it knows what it is. Um, okay, so that's this thing. So we need an axle coming out of the gear thing. Or do we need to put a gearbox against the, we didn't make an actuator. We need to go back up and do that. Um, <laughs> and we might still be too close. 
I don't know if we need to build from here towards the machine or if we start from the machine and end up here. So let's go back up though. We need to make an actuator and then figure it out. Um, I do know I'm going to need you and you and you. And we'll put you on the back. Um, can I open you? Nope. And now. All right. Actuator. Mechanical actuator. So we need some Caymanite bricks, iron mechanical components, winding gear, steer, steel, steel, mechanical components, iron ones. The winding gears needed copper um, gears. So we need to make that. Um, iron gear, we need to make that. And redstone. And then the Caymanite bricks, we have enough of. Okay. Gears. We'll do those first. And then the winding gears. Need that. And now we should be able to do the actuator, right? So we have an actuator now. <laughs> yep, gearbox on the mechanical output. So we'll need to make some space. Okay. Oh, let's do this. Whatever this, bind this to a lever in the world to activate remotely. That's kind of cool. Let's make some more steel axles and complete this. Um, steel rods, which required plates, right? Yeah, steel. We have some steel plates, but we're going to grab some of that and we're going to grab whatever our ratty has made. He still has one. All right, here, and then we need to do that. We did four for the quest. All right. The remote lever. Look at, we're almost done with this chapter. I'm going to put the remote lever away. Oh, yeah. This mechanical actuator I would like to put right there. So yes, we're too close. Too close. Okay. That picture. 
have the gear with an axle coming off of it. We might only need to do this gearbox into the mechanical input and then one axle into the actuator with another gear. Um, let's get you. Gearbox. Yeah, we might just need that. Where did that put it? Where is it going? They're being placed. You would think you'd be able to see them. Okay, now that's not what I want. Anyway, all right. We'll do. Gearbox against this, right? Is that what it said? It's important to note that most axles and gearboxes must be shift clicked onto the previous piece to connect them properly. Shift click. Shift, click. All right, and then for gears, uh, there's one there. How do I get one here? <laughs> I want one right there. How do I get you there? I'm just not seeing where it's going. I can't see them. Hmm. Looks like I only put one on there though, because it keeps popping off. So we're gonna I'm going to make the assumption that that is correct. Hmm. <laughs> Gear here, gear there, yeah. Um, and this said the gearbox should be directly against the mechanical output, and then the gear and axle coming off to the gearbox. Each initial bend. We're not bending, so we don't need to worry about that. All right, so the next test is to actually fill this with supplies, water, and uh, fuel, and see what happens. Missing fluid input. I put some in there. It says it's got some. And I don't know. If it needs a ton of fluid. I just 
just have this one little baby bucket. So my own my guess is that this is probably not enough water to get started. Missing structure. What? Oh, this became a regular furnace when I did this. Uh huh. do probably want a way better way of getting water but for now There's a gear here and a gear here, and that's pretty much what it said. I shift clicked it onto the output. I can only right click this mechanical actuator, I can't shift right click it. Um. Hmm. Well, this is definitely something I don't know where I would go wrong. Um. Whenever you attach an axle, gearbox, or actuator, I didn't do that step. This guy, I did not shift click, which that doesn't look right. But who knows? Okay, well, I shift clicked it onto the extending piece. Um, this has water in it now. I would assume that's enough. I don't know. I don't know what to do now. It just says missing fluid input. Do I seriously need to set up a water pump and pump water into it? I 
Yeah, this I might need to yeah, investigate a bit more. I know there's one Let's Play out there that he showed how this was running. I might need to go watch that bit and see how he has that set up. Um, because, yeah, I am not sure. Not sure. I do know this visibly turns and spins and stuff when it's actually working. And all I had done again it water and so my one I'm just not sure what else this does. Don't know. Okay, so we put that, 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 that. I'll pick you up. And we'll go back up. So yeah, gonna have to get some assistance with that before we'll be able to go any further with that because I don't know what it needs to be done. We've read all of the quests. Lava to power the machine! Did you just see that? <laughs> it pays to reread stuff. Oh dear, we have a creeper. He's going to move. Oh, we have a bunch of things. I always forget that I've got night vision. So maybe this fluid isn't water. Um. It's gonna take forever. We need to empty this bucket faster than that. <laughs> okay. I need a new pick, that's why we're coming up here. We'll just, uh, yeah, we'll get rid of it somehow. How about here? Pick. 
don't want you. I want you. All right. Do I have any more buckets? I do. It'll help a little bit. Now, <laughs> I'm pretty sure they gave us lava for a reason. <laughs> Processing. It's supposedly doing something, but this is likely not set up correctly because otherwise it would be spinning. So we're going to take it apart. Come on. Oh, that's spinning. That part's right. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <gasps> oh, I see what it just did there, I think. So maybe that's why I've seen them where they are on the side. Okay. No, something here isn't right. Applied. I need to. Can't apply a gear from this side. It only takes the one gear, no matter what I do. Where the gear goes. 
Maybe a shaft going into the mechanical bit on the floor. Well, according to the picture, that's not right. See, it shows a gear here into the actuator. We can't actually, I can't see the gear. Maybe the actuator's on wrong. Okay, so then... See, now that I see this, it doesn't... Ah! I just had to turn it! Four is running! Okay, so I had to, I when I picked this up, you can see the gray bit here on the actuator. Apparently it has to touch the mechanical core. All right, so now if we do, um, we should be able to just put, where did the pipe go? Lever. Turn it on. Yes, we are getting things. Yay! <laughs> I did have to shift click, but I shift clicked against the mechanical core with the actuator, but you know, it's still next to the spinning steel axle. And then when I shift click to the gear on is when it is visible. So I'm going to guess that's what I did. Hopefully it helps someone else if they're watching this. The gray bit of the actuator needs to touch the mechanical core apparently. And I did not have it that way before. Good to know. You can see the, the, gore, the bore is spinning. Um, we don't need to see that. I just, so that I knew it was working, that was why I did that. We've put one bucket of lava in there. It's still spinning, but it says it needs more lava, so this could potentially stop spinning. So we're going to need to put lava in this to keep it running, and probably get moved towards making an ender chest. So we're also getting ember shards here we're getting stuff that we haven't been getting, like platinum, and these are all ore formats, so um, we're going to need to process them either by smelting or crushing, um, grinding with magnetic craft, who knows, lots of ways. Yep, I just need, I just, like I said, I need to work towards getting an ember chest, which means getting blaze rods and obsidian, which we have ways of getting obsidian, and I'm pretty sure this is a strong enough pick. The, um, dungeon, there's some obsidian over there that I could just pick up, um, but we still need blaze rods, so. Ender chest. We have one of these that we got as a reward. So we just would need the blaze rods. I have an enderman in a lasso, so we'll be able to get ender pearls. That's why I should bring and make another lasso or two, which I already have a wither skeleton. Um, so I can get some blaze rods and we'd be able to make this an ender chest to send it to our base. Ooh, we're getting ember crystals too. These are way better than ember shards. It's like 
this would be like mini coal and this is regular coal. Essentially the difference there. Hi Comet Lore. Okay. Goals. I have my goals written down here. <laughs> we haven't achieved any of the ones I have written down, but we need to do my homework. Lava gen at four. We're gonna make lava gen down here. And then we need to do ender chest to base for the supplies. No, for the resources we're getting. And that appears to be it. Void static. Definitely do not stand on this. It's from Glacidus, Glacidus, which we're likely going to need. Uses. There are no uses. Apparently you can get it. But you can't do anything with it. Interesting. because that way when the crate is full we'll just put another crate here we'll just and we'll be able to pick it up without spilling everything everywhere so for now I'll just swap crates out and this is using up used up its lava bucket but we're gonna let this just see how long it runs with the two buckets of lava I have put in it hello abrupt abrupt alpaca it's going good learning how to use the mechanical output on the ember bore today so we now have additional resource generation of a different sort um uses good to know on that we can of course smelt it the crushing table i think we need a hammer to do the crushing table from magnetic craft there's a grinder from mechanic magnetic craft Alloy smelter, it's just one to one. This grinder will double, which I already knew about. So will the quartz grindstone. Oh, the quartz only has a chance of doubling. And then of course the stuff that we can't get into yet, like the pulverizers and, well, we do have. We have embers that we could do. When you melt with embers, you get two times the amount. And this is something I wanted to, I wanted Dawnstone because it's a really useful uh, metal uh, that I was thinking would be more useful than it is, but um, you can only make Dawnstone via uh, embers because you need to get the molten Dawnstone, which you need to melt, which is a mixer. You need to mix gold and copper to get Dawnstone. And then you put it in um, a melter, and then you actually I think this does the melting, and then you push it to a stamper and you stamp it to make the ingots. And the uses of Dawnstone, um, other than stuff like that, the beam splitter was something that I wanted. This battle axe looks awesome. So, all of this stuff looks really cool. Um, how can 
many pedestal. I have to remember if that's necessary. The clothing looks cool. I don't know what this is. The Inferno Forge. Super here. Yeah, some of the stuff I've never seen. Um. Anyway, I think Beam Splitter was what I wanted it for initially. But yeah, I don't know. Anyway, is there anything up there? Am I gonna end up getting. No, okay, so let's get rid of you. We'll just tuck you in there. Ember Grit. You can use it as fuel. I wonder if it can go through the same process as the ember shards and the ember crystals. You can smelt it for ember crystal clusters. And the uses of those? Combustion chamber. Catalyst chamber. Yield chart. Or to make wildfire cores. Which I don't know what any of that stuff is. Hmm. Anyway, we'll let that run for a while. No, I need this one. Well, I'm not saying in the ember bore, I was just wondering if it would be converted to ember in the um, process, the initial process that I have up here, but an advanced process. Yeah, I was wondering if it could go in there. The activator, which we should improve. How are we doing on building our buffer? Oh, that's much nicer. Can you say no? Okay. Um, see, I made, because Embers Rekindled, I think, has more stuff in it than the Embers that I've played with. I made a, a codex, but this codex is unfriendly. It's not user-friendly. Um, first, you have to, like, click on things. To unlock them in order to get further things. It is it is very unfriendly. <laughs> but this is what I wanted to get to, the pressure refinery, which is improving embers. Um, this is just like like I said, this is the lower tier. And this will be a higher tier, a higher yield per shard or per crystal. Uh, it needs water and ember to be pumped into it. And you get a 1.5 yield um, if you put it on top of a metal block with lava or fire around it. It can go to three times yield. So you can improve the amount of ember you're creating. I've seen this in regular, this is regular embers. I don't know if this is. Attach a pressure vessel to the side of an ember consuming or producing machine. You can boil water into steam for other purposes. Wookie dookie. Yeah, never heard of that before. But this, this is what we would want to work towards. I don't know why it says steam chamber. But, um, I don't remember it requiring water, but no, it probably definitely did require water. Anyway, uh, Mr. of Mice did a really good bit by bit for embers for 1.11.2, and I believe the uh, information he gave for the refinery is the same for this embers rekindled. So I'm going to watch that and set up a refinery to improve. Since I plan on using the ember, we're getting so much freaking ember, we need to use it. 
You just set it up and just use it. <laughs> use it for that hearth coil to process the materials that I'm using. Um, there are other things, machines that we could use for um, ember transfer. I don't know what this stuff is. And this is all, this crystal, the copper cell is what we've made. The crystal cells I want. This is ore doubling and ore production, or, you know, where you melt stuff down. Um, there's the stamper to actually create ingots. This is the, the mixer to make alloys. This, we've already done the mechanical access. An automatic breaker, so you could actually create your own, um, like, cobble works. For example, with this, um, I don't remember a pump. Is it? Uh, uh, what are you? The hearth coil, yeah, that's what I'm using. The hotter it gets, the faster it'll smelt the items on top of it. All smelted will go into inventory in the coil and be piped out of the bottom. That's what we're using for that stuff. Dawnstone is that special material that can be used in mechanisms. Let's check all these, see what happens. That one you can't check. Um, metallurgic something or others. This crystal cell is what I wanted to make. It's an improvement of the copper cell. Because it holds a lot. When you use ember crystals on it, it increases the capacity of the cell. So that's... It's the mass storage block for ember. What is this? Simple ember emitters are useful and all, but sometimes you want a bit more raw throughput. The ember ejector is a sturdier emitter, functionally identical, but capable of draining and emitting 10 times. Oh, so it's a higher... It's like, I'm using low voltage now and this is high voltage type of thing. Receptors are quickly overwhelmed with this massive quantity and a surplus is lost. Um... You've devised an ember funnel that catches it. Very interesting. Okay. Good to know. This is the beam splitter, isn't it? I think I also have... Yeah, there you go, Darkwing. Another command for you to play with. Eventually. <laughs> um, Bleem Star is four. Two small and two larger. Each of the large ports will function as its uh, as an ember emitter. Um, when ember is fed into the splitter, it will split the ember it receives between these two ports. Mm hmm. Yes, that's what I wanted. For that. That's a um, ember siphon charger. Cinder plinth. I want to make one of these because of the ash blocks. This you can burn anything. It has other uses, but the ash blocks. Ooh, I need to eat. And let's switch to. Oh, I have such garbage in my inventory right now. All right, that's a start. Um, the ash blocks. These here. I want to use these and the archaic bricks in the next um, wing. One of these two wings. Oh, oh dear. Oh my. It just spews things into the world. Good to know, I guess. <laughs> Well, let's get this stuff put away then. Ah. 
How are you doing? You're still really healthy. All right. Looking at this to-do list, I wanted to set up either enchanting, I wanted to find what some of the better tools are instead of me making these thermal foundation tools over and over again. Improving the embers gen, I think I'm going to have to do on my own. I'll make a the refinery and uh, figure out where that's going to go over there. Um, the challenge is I'd like to keep all of my embers generation and use in one wing because transporting ember around the base might be messy. So if I set up for example, the alloying or the stamping or whatever process over here, if I were to do that, it would need to be in this wing. Um, either up here, which could definitely be done since it's already hot up here, to put the embers or processing over here. So we would need the different melters and a centrifuge and the stamper and stuff. I don't know if this is enough space, but we can put it up here. And it looks like it's about time to make more of those. Yep. When this gets, when the, when they get closer to 2,000 is when I think I'll turn this back on again, or when I actually need more supplies. <laughs> right now I don't. And we're making even more now with the boar. So yeah, I think I'm going to keep embers on this side. Might be smart. Anyway, so the other things I wanted to work on then is what I just wrote down with the lava generation at the boar. And I will probably just grab a, make another one of these arboreal extractors and a dark wood. Set it up there. It's got an output port. Um, you can automatically push. You can auto output. So if I just push this up against a, the, the fluid port for that machine, we should be able to just automatically fill it with lava. So I'll probably just make another one of these setups down there. And we'll just automatically keep it filled with lava that way. And then I think I'm going to need to make some lassos and go back to the nether and try to catch myself a blaze. And it would be nice if maybe I could get a magma slime. Um, what else? What else is in the nether that I might want? See if I can find some brown mushrooms. Yeah. Um, anyway, that is going to be it for me today, though. I'm going to rest my wrists, and I will see you guys again on Wednesday for some more C Block. We'll see how far I got done between now and then, depending on how my wrists are doing. But I hope you enjoyed. I had a good time. I got a lot more done than I expected to. And I will see you on Wednesday. Take care, folks, and have a great rest of your day. Bye!